Let's take a savory gin and make it even more crazy by adding uh, some bacon flavor or roast lamb flavor to it. And then, once we've got that stuff, we can make two different cocktails out of it. It's good stuff. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, and this is Still It, the channel that's normally about home distillation. Today, we're taking it a little bit further, and uh, we're going to talk about what you can do with the spirits you make. So, here I have uh, two bottles, jars, whatever you want to call it, of the savory potato gin that I made a little while ago. Now, if you haven't seen that video and you want to know how to make this gin that I'm using today specifically, you can go on over to uh, this video here and suss that out to uh, make some yourself. Or you can play along at home with your own gin or a gin off the shelf from a bottle store, that's totally fine. Uh, but just to let you know, the stuff I'm using is at 45%. Uh, it's not that different than most gins at 40%, but just so you know. So what we're gonna do today is take this gin, which has got shiitake mushrooms and uh, herbs and stuff like that in it. So it's quite a savory gin, and we're gonna make it even more savory. Uh, and for me, there's nothing more savory than meat. And uh, when it comes to meat, there's two main ones that come to mind with something like this. One is bacon. Uh, and the other is lamb, because we're here in New Zealand, and I feel, uh, I feel patriotically bound to use lamb. <laughs> Turns out that there is a technique called fat washing that we can use, so uh, I'm going to get stuck right into that right now, and we're literally going to take, uh, this is the lamb fat, and this is the bacon fat, and we're going to pour it on into the gin. Uh, unfortunately, that is going to completely ruin the mouthfeel. It's going to be obviously fatty and nasty. Uh, but we can use a technique called fat washing. I've got a beard here stuck <laughs> on my bacon fat. Whoops. Um, but we're going to use a technique called fat washing, which is going to impart the flavor into the spirit and then let us get the fat out. Literally, this is just fat out of the pan from bacon and lamb. Uh, I would suggest if you want to do this, if you want to, you know, get the most fat out of it, cook it low and slow for a long time, render as much fat out as you can. Uh, but the idea literally is, guys, all we're going to do is tip the stuff in on top. Uh, you'll notice also that I'm using relatively large jars that have a wide um, sort of profile, and the reason for that is the fat is going to sit on top of the gin. It's not going to want to mix, obviously, uh, and that is going to give us the most surface area for interaction. So literally all you need to do is tip the fat into the gin and give it a decent agitation at the beginning. If you want to, I don't know if it really makes that much difference. Now, depending on the exact fat that you're using or the type of fat you're using, it may solidify at room temperature. If it does do this, you're going to want to keep it warm for about six hours. A hot water bath in the kitchen sink is a great way to do it. After letting it sit for six hours, it's time to put it on into the freezer. Either leave it overnight or just until the fat completely solidifies. So, now all we need to do is uh, separate the good gin, the good liquor, from the fat and, uh, and bottle it. And of course, make a freaking cocktail, because why wouldn't you? Uh, but, uh, I'm going to use this filter which is actually from a company called Brewing in America, I believe. Uh, these things are really cool uh, because they'll filter a buttload of product really quickly and quite finely. It's kind of like a coffee filter, but it's actually built to go into a mason jar. So it's cool too if you're doing infusions, you can um, pop it down into a mason jar, stuff the stuff that you're, you know, whatever it happens to be, berries or spices or something, and let it sit. Um, I'll pop a link down in the description below for you guys on uh, Amazon. In any case, I'm just going to filter it. So if you do not have a filter like this, which uh, chances are you probably won't, you can just use the uh, paper coffee filters. They'll take forever, just so you know. <laughs> Set it up, leave it, come back later. Um, you can use cheesecloth. Any of those sort of things are going to work, guys. You just want, the, the goal is to filter it nicely so you don't have any floaty chunks, you know, floating around in your gin. I actually do have a really nice glass funnel that's about this big. It's perfect for filling bottles with. I cannot for the life of me find the freaking thing right now. <laughs> so I'm going to use this teeny tiny little flask funnel and uh, pray that I don't lose too much of this product. Seems to be going alright so far. 
A didn't spill a drop. <laughs> Unfortunately, I also don't have any nice uh, clean bottles at the moment, so I'm using commercial bottles. That's all right. So what we're doing here, guys, is making a slightly modified uh, Bloody Mary with gin, or people call it a red snapper, uh, and we're gonna make two of them. So first of all, let's deal to the, uh, the bacony one. I am gonna be a heathen, and I am going to do things all up shit creek if you're a bartender. I'm putting the booze in first, and I'm building this in a glass. But uh, two parts, let's get this thing out of the way. Uh, two parts of our bacon savory gin and with the bacon one i'm going to use a slightly sweeter uh, more ketchupy i guess tomato sauce and we're doing um whoops tomato sauce tomato juice six parts tomato juice now uh next up we have the where's the sheer sauce it has to be done and uh in my opinion the uh, lmp stuff Got to do it, the appearance. One, two, three of those. Hot sauce. No, I'm not using Tabasco, because fuck Tabasco. Tapatio. <laughs> One, two, three of those as well. Now, uh, you could, of course, use all your own spices uh, and mix them in. I don't. Why? Because I've got this. Slap your mama. And it's awesome. Put it on freaking everything, especially this. I'm a double extra heathen, and I'm using my hands, uh, about half a teaspoon of that. Half part fresh lemon juice, quick little stir. We add about as much ice as you can get in the glass. And we're going to keep it somewhat traditional with a uh, celery stalk for this one. And a little extra spice on top. So tomatoey. Spicy, that comes first, definitely. Uh, but after that, we're getting a slight herminess from the gin and just a touch of that really, really rich, bacony. Uh, it does taste like if you're a horrible, horrible person and uh, lick a little bit of the, the bacon fat out of the pan. <laughs> it's that kind of bacon, not the, um, the full on bacon flavor itself. Mm, that's really good. Uh, now we're gonna mix it up slightly for the uh, lamb version of this. So this is the one that's infused with lamb, uh, and because it's lamb, I'm going to change things up just a smidge. So we're starting with two parts of our savory lamb gin once again. Uh, make sure to fish out the flies that got in there. Son of a bitch. We're heading into summer, guys. <laughs> uh, and for this one, we're going with a slightly more savory, more tomatoey soup rather than kind of sweet tomato ketchup. That tomato juice. So this is V8. And once again, we're still going with one, two, three. Well, six parts tomato. Now, lamb to me, roast lamb to me, you serve it with mint sauce and a red wine gravy. I'll fight you. I will fight you. <laughs> so we're going to add just a little bit of uh, red wine and we're doing one part of Merlot. Two dashes of Liam Perrin this time, a little bit less. And only one dash of Tapatio. It's, I mean, it's a red snapper, so I want it to be spicy, but, whoops, that was a little bit. For me, I'm aiming more towards roast lamb on this, and I'm dying the spice down a little bit for that reason, because chili and roast lamb is not what I'm used to. But for you, sure, go ahead. Uh, and once again, I'm going a little bit lower, I'm more like a quarter teaspoon. Slap your mama. I'm also dialing the lemon back to a, uh, a quarter, and the reason for that is I'm really wanting to let that umami shine through on this one. All right, so once again, quick stir. Don't lick your knives, guys, bad idea. And this one, we're mixing it up a little bit and I am uh, garnishing it with some fresh rosemary and a couple of pieces of sage. Mmm, yes. <laughs> okay, uh, huge umami, 
huge savoriness. The herbiness is coming through. I have to say that that's going to be reinforced seriously with the garnish here, but that's cool. I'm fine with that. The lamb is just a suggestion. It's there and it is, it fits into the background and plays with that touch of wine. Um, it's actually like drinking gravy, which is, to be honest, a dream come true. <laughs> Cheers guys. So there we have it guys, uh, two different ways that you can push a savory gin with fat washing uh, and two slightly different cocktails that you can use with them. Before we go any further, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much Patreons. I can't do this stuff without you. So thank you so, so, so much. Both of these are really delicious in their own way. Um, drinking them, you don't get a huge hit of the bacon or the lamb. It's more like you're drinking, you know if you're eating a meal and you, you, you know, you're drinking with it and you kind of get flavor carryover from one to the other, the drink makes the, the meal taste a little bit different and a little bit better, the meal makes the drink taste a little bit better and a little bit, you know, more crazy. It's that kind of flavor. Every now and again it jumps up and grabs you a little bit more uh, and it is very much the fat flavors of both of these meats. So it is the, the unctuous, thick, creamy, uh, bacon fatness. Mm, yum. <laughs> uh, and with the lamb, it's that, it's almost like if you've got roast lamb and you made a gravy out of it, and there was a little bit too much fat in the gravy, and the gravy's gone cold, and it's kind of just starting to congeal on top. <laughs> That's disgusting. Uh, I, I totally don't eat that with a spoon, ever. But it tastes like that. That's the lamb flavor that comes through. Um, so both of these, I gotta tell you, man, these are right up my alley when it comes to cocktails. Huge umami savory hit. The extra spice uh, on the bacon side works well with the extra sweetness from, um, you know, the, the, the sweeter tomato juice. Bacon goes awesome with chili uh, and, you know, like bacon chili chocolate is a thing, man, and it's delicious. So that's kind of the idea going on over here. The lamb, much more savory, dialed the spice down. Mmm, good freaking stuff. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a whole lot. Uh, if you really liked the video and you're not subscribed yet, hit subscribe down below. I'm gonna see if I can get that dog to stop barking before I start recording the next video. And you guys, I'll catch you next time. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.